guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing my initial thoughts on this brand new G82 M4 Competition. I've had this particular press car for the past five days and covered 600 miles in it. Some of that on track as well. If you missed my initial first drive video, there'll be a link to that somewhere up here and in the description below. I go over that particular car in detail, whereas today we're gonna to be solely talking about things I love and things I don't love. I'm not gonna use the word hate because that's a bit strong. I can't imagine there are many people out there that have covered 600 miles in either the new M3 or M4. So I thought you'd appreciate my initial thoughts of living with this car. Before we jump in and take it out for a drive and I share those thoughts with you, I just want to talk about the actual spec of this car. It's Tanzanite blue with Silverstone extended leather interior. Tanzanite blue is one of my current favorite BMW colors. In fact, it was one of the options for my incoming M3. Thankfully, I didn't go with that and you'll have to wait and see what I did go for very soon. The reason I say thankfully is because it marks and scratches so easily. In fact, it's probably getting swirls in this gentle breeze as I talk. It's quite ridiculous. This car has done 3000 miles since new and it's got so many marks across the paintwork. So although this is probably a perfect color to have if you're obsessed with detailing your car every Sunday and have plenty of spare time on your hands, for me, it's just not right. It looks fantastic when it's clean and in fact, when it's dirty, but when you do clean it and have a closer look, there's swirls and marks all over the place. Something else we need to talk about before we get in is its looks. And I know that's a controversial subject, but I've loved it since day one. And living with this car, its looks have grown on me even more. It attracts a lot of love out in the wild too. I've had so many people come up to me in petrol stations, which has been quite a regular occurrence and on social media. The amount of likes I've had of pictures of this and that other M4 and the M3, which was oxide and not Dravit Grey, as I was told in the launch, so apologies about that. The likes and the love around those pictures alone are just mind blowing. So I think people are coming around to liking the way these look, but you really need to see some in the flesh. And once again, I totally respect people that don't like it, but just give it a chance. Let's talk about this driving position. It is without a doubt the best driving position I've ever experienced in any car. And for me, the main reason being is how low I sit in these seats. I mean, look at that distance above my head. Just means I sit lovely and low. I've never experienced this being quite a tall person before in any other car. The only issue with this driving position is it's now ruined every other car, including my M2 competition. It feels like I'm sitting on a beanbag when I've jumped in that in the past couple of days, like literally because my head's right up here, you know, about an inch away from the headlining. And it really has ruined every other driving position compared to this. Aside from the perfect driving position, everything else in this interior is just spot on. I love it. Yes, these do retail at £76,000 on the road before discounts or dealer contributions as they like to call it and that's a lot of money but there is a lot of standard equipment for that you get stuff like the brilliant bmw head-up display and this layout in general with the operating system 7 a digital cockpit everything is perfect there's buttons where i want there to be buttons there is touch screen if you want touch screen and the best thing is you can turn off bmw's rubbish gesture control which drives me up the wall that's the only annoying thing about this car is the gesture control but once you've turned that off everything else works really well the, the steering wheel well it's close to perfect the rim itself actually seems to have lost some weight compared to the m5 and M8, which is perfect. It's still not quite thin enough, not quite Porsche-like, but they've actually started stripping some of that unnecessary padding out of it, which then induces a bit more feel back into the steering. We've got these lovely new carbon paddles that are attached to the actual wheel itself, like they are in all BMWs, and not the column like the Julia Quadrifoglio, but I've found them to work really well out on track. When you're a bit crossed up, they're a lot easier to find than the smaller paddles that were on the previous generation, M3 and M4. We've got the M buttons up here. Everything is really, really sorted in this cabin, but these seats, I mean, everyone's banging on about them, including me. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're optional and they're three and a half thousand pounds, but the support and comfort that they offer you are just second to none. 
but they're not perfect. This driver's seat has been creaking a fair amount. It's on and off. One day it creaks, the next day it doesn't. But it does worry me a little bit to think that this car is only, what, about a month old. Maybe in six months' time they could get a lot worse because they're a totally new unit. So I'm going to keep an eye on mine in my incoming M3. Also something to talk about is, well, this carbon... I've been calling it a cod piece holder, but I don't know what it's for. It does remove, apparently, if you're gonna run a, um, a harness, but it's stuck there. You can't remove the actual leather bits around the side and the carbon bit in the middle. And it's okay for the driver because when you're driving an automatic car, you tend to have your legs spread anyway. Your left foot is resting against the footrest and your right foot is on the accelerator and the brake, well, at least on the road anyway. So. From a driver's point of view, it's fine. But as a passenger, it's a little bit awkward. And when I had my other half in the car the other day, she was semi-complaining about the fact that she couldn't really put her legs together. She likes to travel on long distances with her legs together off to one side. And I didn't really think about that because as a passenger, well, you do sort of move your legs around a bit. And with these seats, you're kind of stuck in one position. So definitely something to consider when you're specking your new M3 and M4. Another slight negative with these seats is getting in and getting out. They obviously have some quite high supports down here next to your thighs and obviously to get into the seat you've kind of got to step over that and again when you're getting out you've got to step over it so it's a little bit awkward and it does mean that you do rub on all of these supports and I can already see a little bit of wear down there and this car isn't very old so again it's something that I'm going to be keeping a close eye on with my incoming M3 because well I don't want to ruin the stitching or the leather and looking at that I'm not sure how good that's going to look a year down the track. Last thing to talk about in this cabin is the rear bench. There's not much room back there and in fact there's less room than the previous generation F82 M4. There's a lot less headroom as well and that's due to the exaggerated sloping roofline on this new G82. It kind of tapers down a lot earlier than the older cars. So just be aware of that. If you've got two big adults in the front, you're not going to get anyone more than a big teenager or two in the back. Just want to take this chance to once again say thanks to everyone for watching and supporting this channel especially over the past 12 months. It's been going from strength to strength and once again, I couldn't have done it without all of you guys and girls, so thank you so much. We're starting off in comfort drive, the most relaxed, laid back default setting, if you like. That's where the biggest difference between this and the previous shape M4 lies. And I know a lot of M hardcore enthusiasts are probably gonna think, well, that's not what I want for my M car. But the bottom line is, if you're gonna use your M3 or your M4 as your daily car plus an M car, this car does the daily duty so much better. The ride comfort in here is just ridiculously good. If anything, it might even be better than the 420i that I have. That has adaptive suspension. It's a very comfortable car, but this one, along with these seats that don't look like they should be comfortable because they support you so well. It's a bit like a firm mattress on a bed. Sometimes they're just really comfortable. And this car, and these seats, and this ride, it's just been an absolute joy to live with. in how efficient it is and again I'm sure there'll be people in the comments going oh well if you're spending 80 grand on an M3 and M4 why are you going to care about the efficiency well I've got an M3 coming I haven't got loads and loads of money and I do care about efficiency but more so because I want to get long ranges out of one tank I don't want to get 150 miles out of a tank like I do in my M2 competition and this car with the bigger tank and the ZF 8 speed gearbox allows you to do long journeys with reasonably good efficiency. 
I've averaged 26 miles to the gallon in the time I've had this and that includes spending a few hours out on a track and when you're on the motorway at 70 odd miles an hour this car's sitting at about 1500 rpm in eighth gear so it's just ticking along and as a result you can achieve 40 miles to the gallon all day long at those sort of speeds as we're talking about the zf eight speed gearbox let's put it into my m1 mode that brings up manual so now i can use these lovely paddles and talk a little bit about this gearbox because there's a lot of chatter on the internet about it understandably because the dct although it wasn't a perfect gearbox it was a good gearbox for an m car it really suited the m2 competition really suited the previous m4 and previous f80 m3 what's the zf like well it does a good job in the m5 and the m8 but i guess those cars are more gt cars and do i feel that this car is lacking a little bit with this new gearbox it has lost a bit of character there's no denying that we all know the ZF8 speed is a fantastic gearbox, it really is. It's smooth, it's effective, it will change if it can, i.e. if it's not gonna bounce into the limiter, it will give you that gear. So it works almost faultlessly, but there's just not that engagement that there was with the DCT. That box kind of banged you into gears, almost like a single clutch uh, robotized manual box in that kind of like, thumping way but the problem with that is ironically when you got that car out on track and you had it in its fastest ferocity of gear shifts when you upshifted mid corner it actually unsettled the car so although it felt good it wasn't necessarily that effective all of the time in terms of how this car deals with the typical uk b road like this one well without any issues whatsoever. It never feels too wide, it never feels too uncomfortable because of that brilliant suspension setup. And honestly, I think a lot of that has to do with the smaller 19 inch wheels in the front and the lovely big tire sideboard. This particular press car has the brilliant Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's on it. I've noticed a lot of customer cars are coming with Pirelli P0's and I've heard that the Pirelli tire gives you a bit of a stiffer ride and that makes sense because the Michelin tires always seem to give you such a good ride so I'm hoping that my car's delivered on Michelin's if it isn't then <laughs> I'll be speaking to Michelin and seeing if I can get myself a set of PS4S <laughs> to take this car out in a little handling circuit a couple of days ago and I really got to push it up to and beyond my limits anyway and it was a real joy it stayed so flat and so stable it just managed its weight very well you were aware of it weighing a lot though and that was a little bit of a disappointment it was almost doing magic tricks it was turning into corners a lot quicker than I thought it could the front end grip especially was amazing probably much due to the fact that the front tires are now 275 sections so really really wide so plenty of traction on the front axle but on the exit as well as I talked about in both of my first drives in the M3 and the M4 the way this car exits corners is just magic it's almost like it is X drive it just finds grip so well they must have done a lot to the diff compared to the one that's say in my m2 competition because this car it just finds grip and fires you down the road without any fuss it's really really magical <laughs> Yes, it might not be quite pin sharp on the track and its weight will start showing there, but on the road, it just feels great. It doesn't feel too big. It inspires you with confidence in all weather, this car as well, providing it's got the right tires. It just feels fantastic. And in the five days and 600 plus miles that I've now done in this, there wasn't one bit where I was disappointed. There wasn't one 
section of any road that I've wished that I was in something else. It's really, really been an exciting car to live with and every morning I've got up and got excited about jumping back in it and taking it for a drive and I think that's a really good sign for any car but especially for an M car like this and one that has such a breadth of ability, one that you can put your girlfriend in and some luggage in the boot and cruise around doing 40 miles to the gallon and comfort well reasonable comfort me anyway maybe not Lou with that seat but <laughs> that's another conversation but then at the touch of a button quite literally it turns into what you want in your M car and boy is it fast in any gear the torque is intoxicating everything the power the torque you just wouldn't want any more. In five days, I have not got used to the thrust that this car has. Thrust, it's not power, it's not torque, it's thrust, because any gear, it just pulls. That's fifth gear at 40 miles an hour. It just pulls like a train. It's just unbelievable, it really, really is. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video on the M4 competition. There'll be plenty more videos on this actual car coming to the channel very soon. If you can't wait that long, please head over to my Yes Auto page where I shot an alternative video on this car. There'll be a link in the description below. Thanks again for the support that you've shown me. I'll see you at another video very, very soon. Cheers.